In our last episode, we met with Patriot inside the Institute. Turns out Patriot is Liam Benet, the son of Alan Benet, who's in charge of the entire robotics department for the Institute. Liam Benet hatched a plan to free 13 synths at once, but in order to do so, he needs to unlock a door to a back tunnel system that leads to the teleporter room. But those doors are locked by a very advanced security protocol. Liam thinks that he can crack it by using an old terminal that has a 200-year-old version of that security protocol to interface with the new one. But even then, the old version is so sophisticated that he can't hack into it, and so he needs, as he said, a good old-fashioned username and password. But he didn't know where to look. The ruins of CIT had already been picked clean by the Institute, and so he handed this problem over to us at the railroad. Using Pam, we discovered that there is one ruin in Cambridge that might have these ancient credentials, and that is the ruin of Cambridge Polymer Labs. And so, with our new companion, Deacon in tow, we head over to Cambridge Polymer Labs. We find it not far from CIT. Former CIT teachers and students worked here, so I suppose it's no surprise that it's physically close to the old college. Heading inside, we are almost immediately greeted by a robot named Molly. Welcome to the Cambridge Polymer Labs. Employment opportunities await in the field of scientific research. Shall we begin your application now? Sure, the world may have ended, but why not sit at a desk all day? Let's see what employment opportunities we have available for someone given your qualifications. What? Employment benefits include competitive salary, health coverage, accidental death coverage, and two weeks paid vacation. I don't have time for this. I am required to inform you that this is a secure facility, and access by non-employees is restricted to the lobby. Sure, I'm game. Let's begin the interview. Due to increased demands for staff in all fields, we have condensed the employment test accordingly. Question one, do you possess previous experience with polymer synthesis? Our answers to these questions dictate the type of job this robot gives us. Each question results in a different job. Yes. Calculating test results. I am pleased to offer you the position of researcher. Expect a bright future in polymer research. Polymer synthesis? What are you talking about? Calculating test results. I am pleased to offer you the position of janitorial staff. Expect a shiny future in the field of mopping floors. I could bust your chassis open and we can see what polymers you've got in there. Calculating test results. I am pleased to offer you the position of security personnel. We look forward to having you chase off interlopers. Sounds like you need me regardless, so let's get down to brass tacks. Calculating test results. I am pleased to offer you the position of lab assistant. Expect a bright future in observing test equipment. But if we pass the charisma check... Calculating test results. I am pleased to offer you the position of sales coordinator. Expect a loquacious future in haggling for military funding. Would you like the orientation before beginning your work in the labs? Orientation? The orientation is intended to provide the new employee with a history of the company to enrich their working experience. Would you like the orientation before beginning your work in the labs? No. Let's just move it along. Due to staffing needs, we can forego the orientation at this time. If we choose this option, we skip the orientation, and she takes us directly to the lab. But we don't want to miss any lore, or anything that might help us gain access to the login credentials to Code Defender. And so we can say... Uh, yeah, I guess. Please note that employee enthusiasm is factored into your yearly reviews. Sure, why not? Wonderful. With that, she moves to the left and brings us into a ruined auditorium. Well, it's kind of a small room with a projector, but the projector doesn't work. The ceiling has collapsed into this room, and we only find one seat we can sit in. Please find an open seat, and we will begin the presentation. The genesis of Cambridge Polymer Labs lies in the research of a group of brilliant graduate students. John Elwood, Erica Woolham, and Wilfred Bergman met during their time together at CIT. This slide shows them at their graduation. Their research into nucleostrictive and piezoelectric polymers caught the attention of Colonel George Kemp in the fall of 2073. 
In the spring of 2074, the company was founded with a generous grant provided by the Defense Experimental Research Project Initiative. The research produced here has resulted in several of the components used in the Liberty Prime project that led to the successful defense of Anchorage. The company enjoys a strong relationship with the military and welcomes your addition to the research team that helps build a better America. Please follow me to the research lab so that you may begin your work. Complimentary beverages are provided for employees. Please label any food or cigarettes you leave in the break room. Okay, she didn't say CIT here, but the graduate students that she mentioned were, of course, graduate students of CIT. And she mentioned Wilfred Bergman. One match found. Bergman. Wilfred. Wilfred Bergman, co-owner of Cambridge Polymer Labs, one of the graduate students that founded it. So we are in the right place. She also mentioned something here that can't be right. She said that research produced here resulted in components used on Liberty Prime and that Liberty Prime led to the successful defense of Anchorage. But that's all wrong. First of all, Liberty Prime was a secret military project that was never revealed publicly. Americans didn't know that the military was working on Liberty Prime. Of course, because it was a secret weapon and the military didn't want China to learn about Liberty Prime. Now, in 2072, General Constantine Chase did reveal to the public that America was working on a robotic superweapon, and he mainly revealed this information to combat the Chinese propaganda about their robotic superweapon, which was called Warframe. But Chase purposefully never revealed the code name of the project, Liberty Prime, and never revealed any other details publicly except that they were working on something. So it's completely implausible that during orientation, a robot is going to talk to prospective employees about a secret military project like Liberty Prime. But also, Liberty Prime was never deployed in Anchorage. He was developed as a super weapon back in the days before the war. The first joint operation between Robco and General Atomics International. Apparently, he was meant to help liberate Alaska from the Chinese, but was never completed. They were forced to go in without him. They won, but suffered heavy losses. America defeated China and liberated Anchorage due to their power armor. It was the T-51Bs that were innovative that gave America the upper hand, allowing them to defend Anchorage from China. Liberty Prime was never deployed there because Liberty Prime was never finished. The reason the Brotherhood of Steel has Liberty Prime to begin with is because they found the prototype of Liberty Prime, which was never finished, in the basement of the Pentagon. So all of this is wrong. I don't know if the developers made a mistake here or this robot is just confused. At any rate, she leads us through a break room, through a door, down a long hallway, into a changing room. And she says something different here, depending on the job we got when we talked with her previously. If we got the janitor job. Here is your jumpsuit and mop. Please take a moment to dress in your proper work attire and follow me into the clean room. The research staff will greet you on the other side of the clean room. Thank you for your attention and welcome to the team. She gives us a mechanic jumpsuit and a mop junk item. We don't really have to put them on. We can stay in our existing outfit and she has no further dialogue. If instead we got the security officer job. Here is your security uniform and flashlight. She gives us patrolman sunglasses, dirty army fatigues, and a security baton, which is different than what she said to us. She doesn't actually give us a flashlight because, well, there is no flashlight item in the game. If we got the lab researcher job by failing the charisma check. Here is your lab coat and clipboard. She gives us a lab coat and a clipboard. The clipboard is just a miscellaneous scrap item, and the lab coat is a dirty version of the lab coat. If we got the sales coordinator job by passing the charisma check, sales staff are provided with a business suit, the cost of which will be deducted from your first commission. She gives us a dirty tan suit and a pen, miscellaneous item. And if we got the job as researcher, here is your lab coat and clipboard. We get the same results as if we chose the lab assistant job. We get a battered clipboard and a lab coat. At any rate, she then moves on to the adjoining room. Please enter the clean room. She opens the door and asks us to enter the clean room. Once inside... I have been instructed to inform you that Director Elwood has issued mandatory overtime 
due to uncompleted milestones. Consequently, staff will not be allowed to leave the labs until the piezonucleic lining project has been completed. Please report to the project lead, Dr. Elwood Woolham, for specific research assignment. Starting decontamination sequence. Contamination detected. Initiating decontamination sequence. We get locked inside. It starts a decontamination sequence, but this decontamination sequence actually doses us with high levels of radiation, so we can quickly throw on a hazmat suit to survive. Thankfully, the decontamination doesn't last very long, so it's unlikely to kill us, but the sequence repeats. And so unless we have a hazmat suit, we need to get out of this room. Molly just stares at us from the other side of this window. We find a clean room terminal here, which we can try to access. Clean room system, security lockdown in effect. Some system functions may be unavailable at this time. We find two options. We can try to open exterior clean room door. System error, function currently unavailable due to security lockdown. We could try to open interior clean room door, but we get the same message. This door must be the exterior door, and this one must be the interior door, which means we're locked in this room. We can try to talk to Molly. I have been instructed to inform you that Director Elwood has issued mandatory overtime due to uncompleted milestones. Have you completed the research on the piezonucleic lining project? What am I supposed to do? Perhaps you could begin by familiarizing yourself with the current state of the research. The console at your workstation should provide access. Have you completed the research on the piezonucleic lining project? I'm not sure where to begin. Please see Dr. Elwood Woolham for project assignment. Let me out of here, you stupid robot. Employment will be terminated for any researchers attempting to leave before completion of the project. I'm working on it. Please see Dr. Elwood Woolham for project assignment. Thankfully, we see that one of the walls of this chamber is broken. Had it not been destroyed, we would have been stuck here being dosed with radiation. But since it's broken, we can actually move into the lab. So it looks like we have two choices. We could complete the research project that these CIT grad students and scientists were trying to complete in order to lift the lockdown, or we could try to find another way out. Moving into this next room, we find a skeleton in a lab coat on the ground. Looks like the scientists didn't make it out. I wonder if we can figure out what exactly happened to them. We find the interior door here and a clean room terminal on the other side. But this terminal is in lockdown too, so even though we can walk through the broken wall, we can't open this door. To the west, we find a broken door leading into a large room. There is another skeleton on the ground in there. Boston used to be a hub for high-tech companies. You can find places like this tucked away all over the place. Thank you for that, Deacon. Peering through the window, we see a number of lab rooms on two different floors but we can't get into that room from here. So passing through a broken wall to the north, we arrive in a much larger room filled with scientific equipment. Molly suggested that we read a terminal to figure out how to solve this problem. In this room, we find Erica's terminal. User Dr. Erica Elwood Woolham signed in. Oh, okay, already we've learned something. Remember the three graduate students that we learned about in the orientation were John Elwood, Erica Woolham, and Wilfred Bergman. Wilfred Bergman is the guy who has the password for Code Defender, but it sounds like Erica Woolham and John Elwood must have at some point gotten married, because now her name, according to this terminal, is Dr. Erica Elwood Woolham. We find two options in the first one, Nucleostrictive Lining Project. We find five entries in the first project thesis. Initial studies have led us to hypothesize that by taking a known piezoelectric material, lead zirconium titanite, PZT, and properly applying a polymer of gold and lithium hydride, that a localized conversion of ionizing radiation to electrical energy might be achieved. This method of compact energy harvest may prove suitable to application to pre-existing power armor currently in use by U.S. Armed Forces. Dr. Erica Elwood Woolham, D. Eng. Department of Engineering, maybe? Okay, so this lab was trying to produce a lining for power armor that harvests compact energy. And this makes Molly's comment about Operation Anchorage make a bit more sense. Power armor was instrumental to America defending Anchorage. And if this lab had anything to do with it, it makes sense that their experiments would be on upgrading and improving power armor. 
Good to see that this lab has nothing to do with Liberty Prime, as it shouldn't. In the next one, thermal dissipation. Initial tests have proved that the methodology is sound. A radioactive energy harvest is 15 times higher than current automotive fusion engines. Unfortunately, there are still problems that we need to overcome. The ionic excitation in the gold that produces the harvestable electrons also create a buildup of thermal waste. The heat is not substantial from a macro perspective, but due to the low shear modulus, the gold suspension in the nano weave starts to break down quickly under extended use. We are going to attempt to change the dosing pattern on the gold to produce thinner strands through the material. The increased surface area should help dissipate the thermal energy, much like a heat sink. So they're trying to produce a lining for power armor that harvests radioactive energy. But what are they going to use that energy for once they harvest it? In the next one, tensile strain. The newer dosing patterns have been successful at dissipating the heat generated by the reaction. We've taken a slight hit to the harvest efficiency, but extended the static material lifetime from a matter of days to a several years. It should be several years, but anyway. While this is, from our perspective, already a successful experiment, the project parameters require a flexible lining that can be applied to power armor. It seems we underestimated the tensile strain the armor produces, and the thinner gold weave in the material ends up shredding, so to speak, under the heavy use. Colonel Kemp was less than pleased and threatened to pull the funding if we can't produce the promised results. So we need to go back to the thicker weave and find a different way to solve the thermal dissipation issue. In the next one, trapped. We've been trapped in the lab for days now and tensions are running high. The team is fractured and falling apart. They don't know what is going on outside and have started making attempts to escape the lab. While I was sleeping, they managed to cut a hole through the thinner interior wall of the clean room, but have been unable to break through the hardened outer wall. Oh, so that's why there was a hole in that wall. Will started talking with some of the others about going at the problem from a more oblique angle, which got me to thinking about the thermal dissipation problem when it dawned on me. If we change dosing patterns so it isn't producing nano holes perpendicular to the surface, but instead at an angle, we might be able to reflect the most direct radioactive particles and trapping only those coming in at an oblique angle to the material. We would achieve a lower energy harvest, but the heat dissipation issues might be solved. Tom, Mary, and I are going to gather the samples needed to try it. Something happened that trapped them all in this room quite possibly the end of the world. But it sounds like solving the problem was the key to getting out of here, which is why she, Tom, and Mary were going to continue working on the project, while Will and some others were going to find another way out. In the last one, we are so close. We've been unable to gather the samples needed to try the new dosing pattern. Will has locked himself in one of the labs and has been attempting to hack into the administrative systems. When we tried to get the U-238 we need from the isotope containment, he locked it down, leaving Mary stranded inside. He said he's going to set the facility defense systems so that it looks like the lab has been breached. This will unlock the clean room, but will also activate the automated defenses, which will see us as attackers. He means to fight his way out, but that's suicide. He's the only one in the lab with military training, and we don't even have real weapons. I've tried to tell him that we can complete the project, that we have the answer now. But he refuses to see reason and doesn't believe John will actually let us out. We've managed to pull down part of the ceiling in C1, which will get us into the utility crawl space. It can't get us out, but it should be able to get us above the lab Will has barricaded himself in. I don't like it, but we have to get the drop on him. Oh God, so much going on here. Okay, so John, who presumably is her husband now, locked everyone in the lab. And we can infer from this that he promised to let them out if they completed the project. But instead of completing the project, Will wants to hack into the defense systems to trigger a false security breach. That's gonna unlock the doors so they can get out, but it's gonna turn on the defense system which will kill them all. But we learned a few really interesting things here. Part of the materials they need to complete the project is isotope U38, which is currently locked in containment. In order to hack into the defense systems, Will locked down containment, leaving both the isotope and Mary inside. 
The scientists then removed part of the ceiling in C1, which must be a lab room, which leads to a utility crawl space which can get us into the lab that Will was trapped in. So, isotope in containment, crawl space in C1, Will in the lab. Unless any of this has changed in the last 200 years. Backing out of nuclear restrictive lining project, we can now read internal mail relay. In the first one, W. Bergman, I'm getting us out. This must be from Will. I'm not letting John play tyrant any longer. The isotope containment is leaking, and he still won't let us out. I've gotten through his updated security subroutines, and it's only a matter of time until I get control of the facility defenses. He's so busy trying to keep me out of the clean room controls, he probably hasn't realized that by triggering a facility breached sweep, all the doors will open and allow the robots access. We're fighting our way out, and then I'll deal with your husband. Will. And the next one, John Elwood, confidential. Erica. I've sent an explanation to the team, but I need you to know what is actually going on. Please do not share this with anyone else. It may start a panic. This morning I got a call from Colonel Kemp, and he told me to keep our team in the lab. But before I could ask, he hung up. The sound you heard outside was an atomic bomb going off. It seems to have hit southwest of the city. The phone lines have been jammed, but I found a way to reach Kemp's liaison, and he informed me that they could only afford a detail to escort us to safety if we have vital military assets or intelligence. That is why we need to get the project finished. I love you, and I know you can do this. John. Oh, so John is in charge of the lab now, and he locked them down because he needs the team to complete the project because they can only be rescued by the military if they have vital military assets to deliver. But maybe Will is right. Maybe all they need to do is escape, and maybe they don't need a military detail. In the next one, John Elwood, Mandatory Overtime. Good morning, everyone. I know you've all been here overnight and everyone is tired, but I need everyone to push through just a little longer. Dr. Elwood Woolham has said that you are very close to cracking the problem with the Nuclear Restrictive Lining Project, and I have a good feeling that today will be the day. Along with our normal snacks, I've sent a runner to Slocum's Joe for coffee and donuts. We'll be ordering Spuckies later this afternoon. I also just got off the phone with Colonel Kemp, and he said there may be some training exercises happening around town today. So if you hear what sounds like tanks or gunfire, don't panic. It's just a drill. Lies to keep the team calm, but he told his wife the truth. Backing out of Erica's terminal, we can explore this small room, but there's nothing here until we get to the eastern wall. Here we find a couple of receptacles connected by wires to a nearby terminal. And then lying on a shelf is an unidentified sample 11317. Before we do anything, we can read this terminal to figure out if we can make sense of this. Polymer coding applicator terminal. Device status, system error, isotope reservoir below minimum levels. Device unusable at this time. We have three inputs, a left reagent input, a right reagent input, and a radioactive isotope input. Current operations executable, nuclear restrictive lining project version 8.9.4. We could try to scan loaded reagents. Reagent scan complete, currently loaded reagents, none. Of course, because both of them are empty. In the next one, we can check current fabrication parameters. Begin nanoweave mesh extrusion pattern 1142. Input reagent 1, lithium hydride. Input reagent 2, gold. Apply output to metal hard form number 2197.45. Begin radiation dosing pattern number 71.76.2. Isotope U238. Whole size 14 nanometers. Dispense. End. This is telling us what we already learned while reading Erica's terminal. The ingredients they were using were correct. All Erica did to solve the problem was change the angle of application. But we learned in her first terminal entry that the correct ingredients were gold and lithium hydride. And in her last entry, we learned where to find the isotope she needed, U238, which is locked in containment with Mary. All right, so we know where to get the isotope. We don't know where containment is yet. We'll have to find it later. Backing out, we can try to run loaded fabrication routine, but since we have no reagents or isotopes installed, nothing happens. 
Now we do find a container here, an unidentified sample 11317. Could this be one of the reagents we need? Look at all the gizmos. That's my term for them, patent pending. Thank you for that, Deacon. We'll just call it gizmos for now. To figure out what's inside this sample, we can load the unidentified sample into one of these receptacles. Then, activating the terminal, we can scan loaded reagents. And we discover that the reagent we just put into it is hydrochloric acid. Well, this isn't going to work. We already learned that the correct reagents are lithium hydride and gold. So, we need to go exploring. We find one door that leads out of this room to the west. Opening it, we see that the primary lab atrium is a complete ruin. There are ruined stairs leading to a second floor, but a number of labs on this one. Which one is C1? On the ground, we find a ghoul corpse. And that's right, we read from Erica's terminal that one of Will's complaints was that the isotope containment room was leaking. So any lab technicians who didn't die got turned into feral ghouls. And are any alive? This is yep. Oh, great. After looting the bodies and containers, we can start to examine these rooms. Oh, great. Looks like there's a ghoul in this one. Can we sneak up on him? Yes. But this room just seems to be a supply room. We find a first aid kit, a hazmat suit, a couple of containers, and unknown sample 3111. Hey. All right, so we need to scan this. Heading out, we can move into Erica's lab and load the sample into the scanner. Then we can scan the local reagents. And this is lithium hydride, one of the correct reagents. One down, two to go. Back out, we can try to explore the next room. This one is labeled C4. Inside we find containers on a shelf, some lab equipment on another shelf, and a hole in the wall leading to an adjoining lab with ghouls. But hang on a tick. In the room we just came from, we find another reagent next to some beaker stands. Snagging this, we can head back to Erica's lab, load it into the scanner, and then scan it. This is gallium. Well, this isn't what we want. We need gold. So back out and into room C4, we can go back into the other room and finish exploring. Here we find another unidentified sample. All right, but before we go scan it, we find a terminal here. This is Isotope Containment Terminal, and it's locked with a novice lock. Perfect. We'll lock down the Isotope Containment Room, and that appears to be the room on the other side of this glass. Looks like we can unlock it by hacking into this terminal, which we can do. But before we do that, let's go ahead and load our latest find into the scanner. Into Erica's terminal, we can scan, and it's tungsten. Crap. Another dead end. Backing out. Uh-oh. Sounds like we've woken something up upstairs. Before we unlock isotope containment, we find a door to the northeast. This leads to a hallway, which leads to a locked room. This is isotope containment. This is the door we need to unlock with the terminal. So, heading back into C4 and moving through the break in the wall, we can hack the novice lock terminal, whereupon we read, Isotope containment, emergency lockdown in effect. Leak detected in radioactive isotope containment. Personnel are advised to evacuate the facility until proper maintenance can be performed. In the event that evacuation is not possible, protective suits should be worn. And from here we can access security door control and open the door. Oh, great. We just set off an alarm and a glowing one emerges from the radioactive goop in the room. All remaining ghouls come to life, and we gotta pick them off. Time to earn our paychecks. I'm getting paid, right? It's all your friends, you dead bastard. We'll be here all week. Well. That's all of them, except for the glowing one. We didn't see him. Moving back into the northeastern door, we can move towards isotope containment where we see an eerie green glow in the doorway. Oh, great, that can only mean one thing. But where is he? Oh, where are you? We saw his green glow, where did he go? 
Well, the glowing one somehow moved out of this room, but while we're here, we can try to find the isotope. We see a skeleton against a wall. Could these be the remains of Mary? Remember, she got locked into this room. There's a shelf nearby. We just find some hard hats. Moving down into the water, we don't take rads because we're wearing our hazmat suit. And then against the western wall, in a little beaker stand, we find radioactive isotope U-238. Bingo. Now all we need to do is find some gold and we can get out of here. Back out into the atrium. Oh, there he is. He went upstairs and the defenses are going crazy. To fight another day and night. And we got fun. Really? So close. He jumps down and races towards us. Had to ruin it. Oh, and we just barely got through that. Actually, now that I think about it, this glowing one must be what's left of Mary. Because the skeleton we found in that room was wearing pants. I guess that doesn't mean he had to have been a man. But we know there were a lot of other lab assistants here. But we've got the isotope, so we can head back into Erica's room, load the isotope sample into the isotope scanner, and then head upstairs to try to find some gold. Looks like the security turrets took care of most of the ghouls up here. We see a window overlooking isotope containment to the north. Moving east, we can loot the bodies of the ghouls. There's some scrap on a table, some scrap on some shelves, some mentats on another shelf. Then we can move south along this walkway to explore the rooms to the east. Looting the bodies along the way, we enter the first room. Here we find a number of desks we can use to take advantage of the scrounging perk, and then enter a closet to the north. Here we find some Radaway. Up. Oh. And a straggler. There is a chemistry workbench in this room, some mentats on a shelf, and three bottle caps spread out. After looting a final stim pack, we can move out of the closet. And this must be Lab C1. We see a rubble ramp to the east next to some desks. There are bottle caps on one of the desks and a skeleton wearing a trilby at a terminal who appears to have poisoned himself. Rat Poison sits next to a teapot and the skeleton is holding a teacup. Next to his hand is a suicide note. Everyone else left tried to get into Bergman's lab to get the password for the isotope containment, but he rigged up some kind of gun. Erica was killed. Most of my hair is gone from the radiation and I can barely see. There's no way I can finish the research on my own now, so I've chosen to make it a quicker end. John Elwood, I'll see you in hell. Tom Franklin. Erica, John's wife, was killed trying to get into Will Bergman's lab. Erica was the only one whom John entrusted with the truth. She was the only one who knew that they had to get the research done in order to get an escort out of this place. No one else understood why John locked down the lab, and so they all hated him for it. But lying on a desk next to his suicide note is unidentified sample number 49. Well, after giving this room a thorough inspection for any more loot, we could go scan this last reagent, but I wanted to see what was up in the crawl space above C1. Heading up into the crawl space, we see that left is a dead end, and moving right, we see a hole in the ceiling leading to the platform below. Skirting this hole and turning left, we see another hole that just leads to the window overlooking isotope containment. But after jumping down to explore this, a ghoul pops out from the other side of some filing cabinets. <laughs> We can loot this section of the offices to find some scrap, some caps, ammo, and a nuka cola. Here we find a novice lock terminal next to an expert locked safe. Hacking the terminal, we discover Mary Goodman's terminal. We have two options in the first internal mail relay. We find a lockdown status from John Elwood. Lockdown status. Everyone just needs to calm down. Yes, as you've heard by now, I have locked you out of the clean room. As my previous email stated, this push to finish the project is mandatory. As soon as I have the data for the successful prototype, I will unlock the doors and everyone will be free to go home. 
to address concerns about the noise outside, those are just the military exercises I mentioned. I'm aware they're very loud and that some of you have been disturbed by it. I assure you, everything is fine. Though we are not openly at war with China, things are still tense and the military feels that ground defense exercises are necessary to our safety. Finishing this project here isn't just vital to the company, but also to helping protect our country. Director Elwood. And in the last one, mandatory overtime. This is the big company-wide email that he sent out that we read on Erica's terminal. But backing out of internal mail relay, we can activate safe control and disengage the lock for the expert locked safe. And we can walk away with a bunch of ammunition. Now, we do find a final lab to the southwest. And it looks like there's a terminal in there that we can interact with. If we try skirting this little lip over here, we find that it's locked with a security door. We could try to hack this expert locked terminal, but... I couldn't hack it, and so it looks like we need to get to that crawl space to get inside. But hopping down, we can first load the last unidentified sample that we found next to Tom's body into the receiver and scan it. And it's cobalt, not gold. Oh, come on. Well, that only leaves one place where the gold could be, and that's in Will's room. Right, well, back up the stairs and into lab C1, we can again climb the ramp to the crawl space, and this time not drop down to explore any of these gaps in the floor. Rounding a final turn, we find a gap overlooking Will's office, and here lies the skeleton of a woman. This must be Erica. She died trying to get to Will, presumably to have him see reason. Dropping into the room, we can get rid of any final ghouls. And since this room was locked, and we know who was in here, the ghoul we just killed must be the ghoul of Will Bergman. We find a skull next to some Brahmin meat in a room that's been locked for 200 years, long before Brahmin could have possibly mutated. Also, no idea how they got a random skull. But at last, we find the final unidentified sample next to a terminal. This has to be the gold. And then lying on a desk next to the terminal is the radioactive containment password. This password allows us to unlock Got the it. novice lock terminal that we already hacked to gain access to isotope containment, the room where we found the glowing one. Before reading the terminal, we can give this room a final scan. There's a laser trip wire right next to the door. We can access the terminal to open the security door. Then turning around, we can loot some stim packs and at last access Will Bergman's terminal. User Dr. Will Bergman. We find a number of options in the first. Isotope containment. Local status, local controls engaged. System error, breach detected in containment. Please use extreme caution. Local controls can be found in containment lab C5. That's the terminal that we hacked to open the isotope containment room. And the next facility defense systems, we find an emergency override. Facility breached. We don't have to click this. And in fact, we need to be careful about choosing this option. If we do, we read status sent to security breached. All lockdown overrides cleared. Defense systems sent to kill on sight. This is the option that Will Bergman threatened to use to get the doors open. But remember the caveat to this is that the defense system is now active. We can get through the doors, but now we have to fight through security. We already destroyed most of the turrets in the lab, so moving back to the clean room, we now find that we can access the clean room terminal and open the interior clean room door. This also opens the exterior door, and we find that Molly is hostile. Time to terminate you. Jolly g <laughs> You ain't dull. I'll say that. On Molly's wreckage, we find the CPL Director's Key, and we complete the quest, Cambridge Polymer Labs. We can now explore the rest of the facility and leave. But we still haven't gotten what we came here for, and we could alternatively complete the lab assignment. So back in the terminal, we can skip the Facility Defense System option and go right to Clean Room. System Error, access locked by user John Elwood. That's because, of course, John locked the place down until we complete the assignment. Now we can go through Will's mail. And the first one, Erica Elwood Woolham, Isotope Containment. Will, this is insane. 
even if you manage to hack into the administrative controls. Do you know what will happen if you trigger a security breach? Yes, the doors through the clean room will open, but the first thing through them will be a wave of robots to kill every living quote-unquote intruder in the lab. Even if we manage to get past them, there are also the turrets. There's one right here in the lab, remember? If you do this, you are more likely to get us all killed than set us free. Erica. And the next one. John Elwood, hacking admin. Wilfred, do you think I wouldn't catch on to what you're doing? I got a network alert the moment you took control of the isotope containment. You may have been the best hacker on campus back at CIT, but that was years ago, and while you were busy up in Alaska pretending to be a soldier, we had the best programmers working on our security system. I told you weeks ago that I'll let you all out of the lab once the research is complete. Locking Erica and the rest of the team out of the isotope containment just to spite me doesn't accomplish anything. Director Elwood. And the last one, John Elwood, mandatory overtime. This is the same lab-wide email that he sent out previously. Next, we can try to go through his deleted email, but all we find are the subject headers. We can't read the actual emails themselves. Server error, backups cannot be restored at this time. Looks like he's got five deleted messages here from T. Franklin. What are you doing? This is Tom, the skeleton in the trilby who killed himself with rat poison. Mary Goodman. You're going to get us killed. L. Reed can't cut through. J. Harvey, I'm with you. Mary Goodman, about the new dosing pattern. Backing out of his mail, we can next access password reset archive. And this updates our railroad quest. We got the password for Code Defender. From Will Bergman to Dean Vernon. This is likely a reference to the film Animal House that had an antagonist named Dean Vernon, which was then referenced by the film The Breakfast Club, which had a mean principal named Richard Vernon, both of which were referenced later by Futurama, which had an episode called Mars University, a university led by, you guessed it, Dean Vernon. Cheese it! <laughs> Robot House! I want it on record that I highly object to giving admin rights to anyone that isn't on our core team. Admin access isn't a bauble for Director Williams to lord over his colleagues. We've designed a nigh-perfect system, and idiotic moves like this risk everything. I've been informed that legally I must comply with this request, no matter how moronic it is. Username T. Williams, password Vernon, exclamation point, is, exclamation point, and, exclamation point, idiot, exclamation point. Backing out, we can read latest patch notes. Change log for version 1.10b, fixed Darren's dirty, dirty hack. Restricted students to having one account per student ID number, no exceptions. Squashed a ton of bugs. Major revisions to the main UI should be pretty for the dog and pony show. Minor tweaks to the brute force countermeasures. Even Volkov couldn't find a hole. Well, we got what we came for. Now we just gotta get out of here. Instead of fighting our way out, let's see if we can complete the research. We have the final component we need. So heading back to Erica's lab, we can load the latest unidentified sample 611 into the scanner and run the scan. Sure enough, it comes back as gold. Now, as an experiment, we could load some of the reagents that we know are incorrect into the scanner and try to run the loaded fabrication routine. But if we choose any of them, we get a failure. System error, current fabrication parameters not met. Current input reagent, and then whichever ones we chose, in this case, hydrochloric acid and gallium. So nothing happens if we choose the wrong ones. So to get this done correctly, we'll choose lithium hydride, and then we'll choose gold. With the isotope installed, we can open the terminal and run the loaded fabrication routine. Operating subroutine loaded, running fabrication. Please observe at viewing window. Output will be dispensed at wall panel. With that, the fabrication process begins, and as instructed, we can view at the viewing window. A piece of T-51B power armor floats by. When done, it's dispensed. Perfect. We find a piezonucleic power armor chest piece. This is one of the few legendary pieces of power armor we gain access to in the game. It's a T-51B chest piece upgraded to Model C, with the legendary effect radiation exposure 
increases action point refresh speed. So that's what they were using the excess energy for. Exposure to radiation gives us more energy, I guess. And it makes sense that this is a piece of T-51B power armor, as this was the latest and most highly advanced piece of power armor that was available to U.S. soldiers at the time. T-60 hadn't been issued to frontline troops at this time, and X-01 was still experimental. With the experiment done, we can try to leave. Heading back to the clean room, we can talk to Molly. And this time, we can tell her that the project is done. The prototype is done. Wonderful. Mandatory overtime mode disengaged. Clean room override disengaged. The director will want to see this immediately. Please, follow me. Molly guides us out of the lab and into the foyer. Deacon reminisces about Elder Lion's brotherhood. Brotherhood. In Capital Wasteland, they really weren't bad. But now... Molly moves upstairs and brings us to a locked door. This is Director Elwood's office. I expect he will be quite excited to see the prototype. This is John Elwood's office. Oh, great. It's been locked this whole time? Ah! John Elwood attacks as a ghoul. Molly defends us, and we can help out. Incidentally, if Molly is not around to unlock this door for us, like if we had to kill her, we can still open this door using the key we find on her wreckage. With the director dead, Molly heads inside. Sir, wonderful news. The nucleostrictive plating project has finally produced a working prototype. I must apologize for the director. He hasn't been himself lately. Must be the office flu. Payroll systems indicate that I have been authorized to provide you with a completion bonus at this time. Here is your bonus, minus taxes and benefits. Unfortunately, due to a lack of current projects, we must lay off redundant staff members at this time. This is not a reflection on your work, and we will be happy to provide you with a positive reference. Shutting down. <laughs> with that, Molly shuts down in a very dramatic way and we complete the quest Cambridge Polymer Labs. Incidentally, we got 25 pre-war dollars for that. Yeah, and that's within the crazy inflation rules of the Fallout universe. We only got 25 bucks. Yikes. Heading into John's office, we can try and figure out what happened. On his desk... Yes. ...is a copy of Massachusetts Surgical Journal. Scars are cool. Permanently inflict 2% limb damage. Nice. I'm a fan of Grognak myself. What will that wacky barbarian do next? <laughs> who knows, Deacon? Who knows? His desk is empty, but we can access his director's terminal. User Director John Elwood signed in. In the first option, clean room, all systems normal. In the next option, personal logs. We find five entries. In the first, call from Kemp. Just got a very strange call from Colonel Kemp. He asked what the status on the project was, and when I explained that we were still behind schedule, he didn't seem angry like he normally would. All he said was that it was very important that I keep the team working in the lab today, and that I contact him as soon as the project was complete. It almost feels like he was trying to tell me something, but I can't imagine what. The bombs dropped early that Saturday morning. We already know that he and the team had been locked in trying to complete the project. This must have been a very early morning phone call from Colonel Kemp. And the next one, it was a warning. He was trying to warn me. They hit us with a nuke. The lab was built to withstand nearly anything but a direct hit, but the EMP has blown out all external communications. I told the team that there are training maneuvers going on around town, but I don't know how long they're going to buy that. I need to find a way to get a hold of Colonel Kemp to see if they can extract us to a safe location. Even if I can find a working phone somewhere, I'll never be able to get through. Maybe if I can get a hold of a ham radio, I can try to reach them on an open channel. In the next one, we have to finish the project. There are looters everywhere and people fighting in the streets. I managed to find a radio and some supplies, but I caught a stray bullet in the shoulder on my way back. Between that and the radiation sickness, the past 36 hours have been hell. 
I finally managed to find the right frequency and get through to a military liaison, but he said that Kemp had left orders that they could only spare an extraction team for assets vital to war effort. If we try to have them get us out without the project completed, he'll have us executed for treason. I'll have to keep them in the lab. We have to finish the project. Well, why didn't he just tell this to the team? Instead of coming up with a story about training exercises, he could have just been honest with everybody. They would have been less likely to revolt and more likely to get the project done. Well, it's clear from his mails to his wife that he thought they would all panic, but his lie seemed to backfire. They panicked anyway, and they turned their panic against him. Can't hold out much longer. There's been a problem with the reactor. The shockwave from the initial blast must have cracked the containment lining because there's a growing leak showing up on the detectors in the lab. To make matters worse, Will has been trying to hack into the administrative controls. I've been working to keep him out, but I think the wound in my shoulder may be going septic. I don't know how much longer I can hold out. And in the final one, Erica, please read. Erica, I'm sorry. I know I haven't been the best husband, but I've done everything I can to try to protect you since the attack. If you're reading this, I hope it is because you finished the project and can use the radio to signal for extraction. I can't hold out any longer. Well, it looks like even though he was in an office far away from isotope containment, it still wasn't far enough for him to escape the rads. Or maybe he turned into a ghoul because he actually ventured outside right after the bombs dropped. Backing out, we can next read Internal Mail Relay. From his wife, Erica. Are you there? John, are you there? I can't see you moving in your office, and we can't wait any longer. He's going to trigger the automated defenses if we don't do something. We've managed to get into the crawl space and are going to try to take him by surprise. Despite everything that's happened, I want you to know that I still love you, Erica. Erica couldn't complete the project because Will locked down isotope containment. She wrote this just before she went into the crawl space where she was killed by Will Bergman's defenses. In the next one, Will Bergman, I'm getting us out. I'm getting us out of here, you son of a jerk. Do you hear me, John? You may have had the connections to get this company started, but I was always the better hacker. If you don't release us, you'll leave me with no choice but to trigger the automated defenses. We'll have to fight our way out, and Erica may be hurt in the process. Is that what you want? Why didn't John tell Will the truth? He's already panicking. If he kept the truth from the team to keep them from panicking, clearly that didn't work. At this point, he should have just come clean and told them what was really going on. Then they could have all worked together. But no, he kept it quiet. He only told his wife. And the next one, Erica Elwood from his wife. He's locked us out. I've got the thermal problem solved, but we need the samples to produce the isotope. Will's barricaded himself in a lab and has locked us out of the isotope containment. I've told the others what is going on and they hate us for it, but they see this as the only way out right now. We need you to get back control so we can finish the project and get out of here. Erica. In the next one, again from his wife, responding to confidential. She's responding to the email he sent her, confiding in her what was really going on. John, I don't know if we can do it. We've been working on the problem for weeks and have not been able to find a way to prevent the nanoweave from falling apart under the strain of use. Even if we find a solution, it may take us days to program the new dosing pattern, and I don't know if I can cover this up for that long. Even if I can, I don't know if it's right for us to make that decision. Some of them have families out there, and shouldn't they have the choice to try to protect them? Erica. I mean, yeah, Erica's got common sense here. Of course, if anyone left to go check on their families, they'd be doing so without a military escort. Perhaps things were so bad just after the bombs dropped that they wouldn't have gotten very far without an escort. In that case, allowing them to leave would have been suicide for them and a death sentence for the entire lab. Because if anyone left, the team here wouldn't be able to complete the project and then no one would be getting out with a military escort. And the last one, we can read through his deleted mail and again, we can only read the subject lines. Server error backups cannot be restored at this time. N. Stokes, you bastard. T. Franklin, what is going on out there? M. Goodman, you can't keep us locked in here. L. Reed, what you're doing is illegal. J. Harvey, need to get home to my kids. 
M. Goodman. Can't call out of the lab? Backing out, we see the ham radio that John used to get a hold of Colonel Kemp's liaison. It's no longer functioning. Exploring the room, we find minor scrap and ammunition in the containers. There's a fusion core on one of the display stands. And that's it for his office. We can head out of his office and explore this upper level before we go. Minor loot in the containers, but there's an office section to the west. Here we see a number of cubicles with desks and ruined computers. There's one novice locked ammo canister next to a typewriter. We find the section of the floor that's crumbling down into the conference room below, where they showed prospective candidates the orientation video. There's an ammo canister hiding behind a box by this terminal. And, oddly enough, a severed arm next to a typewriter on a desk and some mentats on a desk next to it. Backing out of this room, we can cross the hall and pass John's office. Instead of going downstairs, we can explore a storage room over here, but we just find a bunch of wooden filing cabinets where we can make good use of the scrounger perk. And with that, we've fully explored Cambridge Polymer Labs and walk away with an awful pre-war story. But we got what we came here for. We've got a username and password to a pre-war version of Code Defender. Hopefully with this in hand, Liam Bonet can gain access to a pre-war version of the security code that controls the doors in the Institute. We'll deliver it to him in our next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter or X, I guess, at Oxhorn. I update Twitter, Zitter, manually with every piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in another way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos and access to aux emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the next episode in the full story of The Railroad. <laughs>